Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'm going to be covering WordPress popular posts. This is a plugin with around 300,000 active installations. Um, if you've ever used really like a third party recommendation service, whether it was in Jetpack or add this to generate popular post recommendations, this is a really good alternative. Now. I'm going to be going over the plugin. I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to configure it, and I'm going to go over some of the more advanced options and reference the documentation and my own personal experience with this plugin. Uh, when you install it, you get a nice little general stats window. This plugin creates stats based on the most viewed, the most commented, trending now, which generates it based on popular posts, I believe, over the past 24 hours, and then the Hall of Fame, which is basically the most popular post of all time. When you install it, you just get this menu under here, and if you go into the tools section, this is when you can really start to mess around with its settings. The parameters is mostly just devs modifications that can be made, so we're not gonna mess around with that too much. Under the tools section, you can set a default thumbnail. They have one that just says no thumbnail. Uh, my typical recommendation is either set it to something that's appealing and will fit any type of general content on your website, or use it as a spot for branding, even if it's a no thumbnail, as the text, just make it brandable so that way it fits your website. You could just pick the image from, my recommendation is to always use the featured image. Do not use the first image on post unless you have no, if unless you really never use a featured image. If you're using custom fields in a replacement for a featured image, you can do so here, but you need to define the custom field name. But my recommendation is always to use the featured image if you're using them on your website. You could choose to lazy load. This just lazy loads the images that the plugin generates for the popular post feed. And then you can choose to empty the image cache, which is the cache that the plugin generates for the images to display in the widget itself. Underneath the data section is when you could start modifying some of the more fine details of the plugin. This is when, if you're at a larger medium to large scale, this is when you're gonna start being concerned with the performance of the plugin. So you could choose to log views from everyone, visitors who are visitors only or logged in users only. My general advice is if it's a standard editorial or blog website, make sure to select visitors only. And then you could choose to log limit. This is how long data will be kept in the database for the most popular post. My recommendation is to keep this at a same period, typically every 90 days. Anything longer, and you're probably keeping data well past its, or really well past its sell-by date. After three months, any data that's in there is pretty stale, and you wouldn't want to be showing posts from five months ago as the most popular post on your website. Also, keeping that data in your database for an extended period of time can cause major performance headaches, so it's good to just keep that log data for a reasonable amount of time. If you're super conservative and you want to get rid of it, I would set it to 30 days at the absolute lowest. So my general say is 30 days to 90 days is a good time period. You could just Ajaxify the widget. So effectively using like a caching plugin like WP Super Cache, this will, enabling this feature will keep a popular list from being cached by it. This doesn't Ajaxify the counter functionality. What this does is the widget in the sidebar itself will be loaded by Ajax. I don't recommend enabling this option in most situations. The reason for it is most caching plugins tend to have an expiry time, typically of around 10 hours. And if your website does get a substantial amount of traffic, let's say you get a thousand visitors, let's just say you get a thousand visitors a day, which that may not sound like a lot, but for the sake of conversation, if you are using a page caching plugin to cache all the requests so that your server doesn't get hit, if you Ajaxify the widget, you're still handling a PHP request on every single visitor load for one widget. That seems rather silly to me, especially because of the frequency of which posts and pages get purged from page caching plugins. I wouldn't really recommend enabling this unless you absolutely have to keep that counter up to date for some weird reason. Um, but more or less, you should enable this option for most caching plugins. Uh, data caching, which this is a, so the WordPress popular post plugin can cache that popular list for X amount of time. 
Uh, basically, you could choose to refresh that cache every minute, every hour, days, weeks, months, and years. My typical recommendation is you should be using this on very large websites and you should be caching the data at a decent amount of time. So every one minute as the data being updated is quite foolish. Um, if you're using a page caching plugin and it updates every 10 hours, if you set it to even once every hour that that list is supposed to get updated, that should give you enough time to overlap between your page cachers being purged. And most of the time, if you're using Varnish and so as server-side tech, the default cache time, I believe, is typically four hours. On Cloudways, it is four hours. And WordPress Engine uses one hour. So this is right in the sweet spot of what you should be using. So then we now have to talk about another important detail of data sampling. And data sampling sounds very confusing. Um, what this does is by default, WordPress popular posts will store a visit. So every time somebody visits a post into the database. So let's just say you write a post called hello world and you have a hundred visitors. The next time somebody goes, it's going to update. Now it's, there's 101 entries and then it's going to go 102 and 103. And if you had a thousand visitors that hit it because you go semi-viral, it's doing a thousand writes to the database for one for every single time somebody visited the website. The issue with that is writing to the database that many times, especially in a short burst, can cause major performance headaches. What this does with data sampling is it says WordPress popular post will only store a subset of data. Basically, it tries to do some math. It just maths its way out of the problem based on your average traffic tendencies and how that specific post is working. We're going to go ahead and click the read more because the developer does a really good job of explaining this data sampling. So they mentioned here, why would I want it to store? As you may already know, it'll store everything in the database. For small websites, it's fine, but on larger. Every time someone visits one of your pages, it will generate a random number between 1 and n, n being the sample rate. If the random number turns out to be 1, then the view count of that post or page will be incremented by n. The general idea is that in theory, it should take n tries to hit the number one. The probability of that is n divided, one divided by n. So in the long run, it'll increase the view count by one for each visit without constantly querying the database. Wow, that is a mouthful. So here's it is. What is the sample rate? The default is 100, which is recommended for the amount of sites that get between 125 and 250,000 visits a day. You should adjust the sample rate to your current traffic amounts. We are just going to click apply and let this reload. So right here is now where you can consider where you can set up the sample rate. The sample rate, of course, is the value of n. Um, really, this the, the problem with this is it's very complicated to get this right. You could treat it linear, 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 <laughs> You could treat it very linear. So for the default value of 100 is recommended for 125,000 to 250,000. So we could then assume that if we if you got, let's say 12,000 and 25,000 visits a day, you could put this down to 10. And it should work around the same principle. And then it says adjust the sample rate periodically if your traffic changes over time to make sure your statistics remain as accurate as possible. Basically, if you're a small site, lower this number, and if you're a really large site, increase the number. Um, the general idea is that it reduces the database rights, which will save you resources in the long term. And then the miscellaneous, you could just open the links in the current window or a new tab. I recommend doing it in the current window. And then you could choose to use the plugin style sheet or just to use the themes style sheet if you have it set up. Now, we're just going to talk about one other important detail about this plugin. This plugin makes use of the WordPress REST API. If at any point you had disabled the WordPress REST API, this plugin will not work. And as I mentioned here, it does WP JSON. It has its own endpoint, V1 popular posts, and then it requires a token. And if you notice, the token is assigned per the user's session. The good thing about the REST API is it's in theory cacheable, but I will say that if you if you attempt to cache it, I honestly can't say that it's going to work very well. Um, if you cache this REST API, you could in turn have issues with your data. You could either lose data or you could be inflating data dependent on your if you're using the sample rate feature or not. Um, 
you're gonna have to experiment with this um, but more or less I just you should totally be fine if you're using the sample rate your database shouldn't be getting hammered and the last thing I just want to point out this lazy load feature that we talked about in the beginning if you're using a lazy load plugin like uh, lazy load optimize images by WP rocket or a3 lazy load I would make sure that you disable this option to avoid any issues with them with lazy loading being done twice to the images the other advantage is, is that it should remove this large script that you saw disappear in the footer of my website. If you have any questions about this plugin, please feel free to ask in the comments below. This is honestly a great plugin, and if you really care about having a popular post widget, this is what I'd recommend doing. If you otherwise, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and goodbye.